Okay, so we are talking about all pair shortest path. Uh, we have seen two algorithm uh, dynamic programming based approach like uh, uh, last class we have seen the Ford Versal algorithm. So, today we will talk about some application of the Ford Versal al algorithm that is uh, to find the transitive closure of a graph and then we will move to the another algorithm for finding the all pair shortest path is called uh, Johnson algorithm, but this we will be using the uh, old algorithm like we know dexterous algorithm. So, let us first uh, talk about the applications of Ford Versal. So, just to recap, so Ford Versal algorithm. So, it is basically uh, sorry R is missing A R S. Okay. So, this is basically to find the all pair shortest path. all pairs of this path. So, now uh, we have seen suppose we have a given a graph g v comma e. Now, so this is a directed graph or diagraph graph and we have a edge weight e to r. Okay. So, now, uh, so, so suppose v is basically v 1, v 2, v n and we denote delta u v is the weight of the shortest path uh, from u to v, if it is exist otherwise it is, it is infinity, weight of the shortest path from u to v. If it is exist, otherwise it is infinity. If there is no shortest path from from u to v. Okay. So, basically our aim is to find this deltas. So, delta of i j. So, this delta of i j is basically delta of u i sorry v i v j. So, our vertex are this v i v j. So, this we are denoting by delta of i j. So, is to simplify we denote the vertex as from 1 to n. So, basically delta of i j is the weight of the shortest path from v i to v j it could be infinity also if there is no shortest path. So, for void versal what we did to find out this delta. So, we have defined. So, this we have discussed in the last class just to recap. So, we have defined the C i j the recursive relation uh, C i j k is the minimum of uh, this is the basically weight of the shortest path, weight of the shortest path from path from i to j, v i to v j such that the level the intermediate node intermediate vertices are belonging to to the set 1 to k. Okay. So, that means, we are at ith node, we want to go to jth node. So, we will see some vertices in the middle in the path like this dot 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 this. So, these are the intermediate node in the path from i to j. So, we we want the level of this nodes from 1 to k. So, we 
So, this is phi i j. So, all the vertex level must be less than k, less than equal to k. Okay. There is no restriction on i and j, but in the middle, the vertex x we are visiting, they must be uh, level from 1 to k. I mean, we should not see any vertex whose level is more than k. So, we should not see a vertex whose vertex v k plus 1 say or k plus 2. So, that is how we define c i j k. Now, if so basically what we have? We have c i j. So, what is the recurrence for c i j? So, c i j c i j 0 is basically a i j adjacency matrix. Adjacency matrix means that adjacency. So, a i j is w i j if i j is an h it is w i j if i j is an h otherwise we have infinity uh, yeah so otherwise so what is a i j is a i j is otherwise it is infinity so basically c i j is what c i j 0 is basically what c i j 0 means we are at ith level now in the middle we want a vertex whose size is less than equal to 0, but our vertex start from 1. So, we do not want any vertex. So, if there is a direct edge from i to j and then that will be the basically w i j. So, it is basically a i j if it is. So, it is basically the uh, adjacency matrix coming from adjacency matrix. So, this is the c i j 0 the initial condition, but what is the c i j i c i j k. So, this in the last class we have proved that this is basically minimum among k such that c i j k minus 1 this and c i k k minus 1 plus c k j k minus 1. Okay. So, minimum among this. So, from this we have the uh, uh, algorithm divide and conquer approach. So, that is Foyd Versal algorithm. Foyd Versal algorithm. So, what is that? So, this is basically taking a graph with the matrix A, A is the adjacency matrix. So, this A is basically consist of A i j n cross n matrix. This is the adjacency matrix. Okay. So, basically we initialize by C if we denote this C matrix. So, what is the advantage of getting C? If we know C, because we are looking for delta. So, delta is basically delta matrix is basically delta i j. So, we are looking for delta. So, what is the relationship between delta and c? Now, if we can find out all c i j k recursively kind of uh, dynamic programming technique. So, basically c i j n because our vertices start from 1 to n. So, c i j n is basically giving us delta i j. So, c i j n is basically giving us delta i j. Okay. So, that is why if we somehow can find out all the c i j s for all k from 1 to n, then we got the deltas. Anyway, so this is the initialization step. So, we want to find the c. So, this is the c matrix which is initialized by a matrix. Okay. Then we have this formula. So, for i is equal to 1 to k, I sorry for k is equal to this is c i j k. So, basically we can write c k initialized by this, but we are using the same uh, variable. So, we are just doing 0 to 0 to n, then for i is equal to sorry for uh, i is equal to 1 to n and then again for 
j is equal to 1 to n, this is 3 for loop. What we are doing? We are testing the value of c i j, what we, we have already. So, this is initialized by c i j 0, then we are looking for c i j 1. So, now if this value, if c i k is plus this 0, if this is less than this c i j 0, then we must have this in our c i j 1. So, that is the formula. So, do if do if c i j if this is greater than uh, c i k plus c k j then c i j is replaced by c i k plus c k j. Okay. So, this is the uh, c i j is replaced by c i k plus c k j. So, this is the minimum one we are storing this. We can add a k over here, but they, that k is basically in the superscript, but we are getting this here. So, this is the formula to finding c i k s and finally, the c matrix will be our delta 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, that is that is our delta. So, delta is basically the c matrix. So, this is what we are looking return. Okay, so, this is what we are looking for. So, this is this is what we have, this is called the point partial algorithm and the time complexity for this is basically we have three for loops. So, time is order of n cube algorithm. So, now we will talk about an application of this algorithm, which is called transitive closure of a graph. So, suppose we have a graph, uh, it is a directed graph and here there is no weight on the uh, edges. So, this is called transitive closure of a graph. Transitive closure of a graph. Okay. So, suppose we have a graph G. So, say V is say V 1, V 2, there are say n vertices and for simplicity we are writing vertex labeling as 1 to n. Okay. So, vertex are from 1 to n. Now, so we define T i j to be 1, if there is path from ith vertex to j th vertex, if there is a path 1, if there exist, if there exist a path from i to j, otherwise it is 0, that means no path from i to j. So, that means, if you have vertex i and if we have a vertex j, okay, then, then if we have a direct edge that means, there is a path. So, that is also in, but we are not looking for only direct edge, we are looking for if from starting from i th vertex, if at all we can reach to a j th vertex. So, that is the idea. So, that is the transitive closure. So, if there is a path from i to j, then T i j is 1. Okay. So, some, some path I mean. So, this is the matrix we need to find out the T i j matrix. Is this problem clear? So, we have given a graph, this gra graph is a directed graph or diagraph. We have given a graph and we define a T i j which is basically 1 or 0 it is 0 if there is no path from i to j, it is 1 if there is a path we start from i, if there is a physical path to j, then this value is T i j value is 1. So, basically we want to find this T i j. So, how, how we can get this T i j? So, we want to uh, basically use the void versal algorithm to have this T i j. So, what is the idea? So, idea is to use the 
instead of minimum and plus, we will just use the or and and operation. So, that is the idea. Idea is to use the Foyt Versal algorithm. Void versal, but with the operation logical or an and instead of instead of minimum or plus. Okay. So you we remember the algorithm like we have this C I J k is basically minimum of c i j k minus 1 comma c i k k minus 1 plus c k j k minus 1. Okay. So, instead of this minimum, we will use the or operation and instead of this plus, we will use the and operation. So, that means, either present or absent, this is the by uh, logical operation. So, either present or absent. So, like as if, if we just give the weight of each vertex, because they are, uh, they are, we are not concerned about the weight of the graph. We have given a graph G, which is V comma E, V 1, 2, V the V. So, our concern is, we have to find, so, void versal will find delta i j. So, this is basically C i j n. So, instead of find delta i j, what we are looking for? We, we, we are trying to find T i j. So, basically if we run void versal, the algorithm we have discussed with these two operation, this is the logical or and this is the logical and. Then this will give us T i j. Why? Because if we just add a weight 1 to each of the edges. Then, there is a path means, there is a shortest path. So, we are not bother about shortest path here, we just bother about whether there is a physical path from i to j. So, if you run this for all the vertices, this is for all the vertices, because vertex number is up to n. Then eventually, this will give us T i j, if, a, if it is exist and if the delta is z infinity, then the corresponding T i j, if there is that means that delta infinity means there is no shortest path, because here weight we are assigning 1 to each of the edges. So, there is no question of negative weight. So, if delta is basically infinity, then the corresponding T i j is I mean basically 0, that means there is no path from i to j. So, that is the idea. So, this is the application of Feuerbachel versal on the uh, transitive, uh, transitive closure. Okay, so, now, we will talk about another application. So, uh, means another algorithm which is called Johnson algorithm to finding the all pair shortest path. Okay, so, this let us talk about another approach to finding Johnson's algorithm. Okay, so, this is to find the all pair shortest path. So, so far we know some dynamic programming technique to find the all pair shortest path. Now, if we uh, if we use the void versal we, we know. So, so, suppose you have a graph G V comma E and V is a vertex set of vertices this is a 1 to n for the simplicity we are assuming vertex as numbering as 1 to n. Now, we have seen for bell mesh, so we want to find out the uh, all pair shortest path, all pair shortest path. Okay. Now, we want to see whether we can use the algorithm we already know like single source shortest path algorithm. We know two single source shortest path algorithm, one is Bellman Ford, another one is Drexter's, but Bellman Ford we have seen, Bellman Ford will give us, if we run the Bellman Ford, Bellman Ford 
yeah Bellman port. So, if we use Bellman port, so this is basically a single source shortest path. shortest path. Then Bellman port itself will take order of n square for a single source and we have to run for all the source all the vertices. So, this will give us for all pair this will give us for Bellman port order of n cube. Okay. So, this is not good as the we already have order of n cube algorithm n cube or n square which this is we have to, this is may be yeah, so the, no, this is n n square n cube because Bellman Ford is order of v into e, right? So v is n, and e is basically order of v, order of v square basically. So this is n cube. So this is n to the power four. This is not as good as uh, so Bellman Ford. If we run, it's n to the power four. But if we run dextrous, but, but for dextrous there is a restriction. Bellman port can handle the negative weight edges because it can handle the negative cycle, but dextrous cannot handle negative weight cycle. So, somehow if we know that our graph is having no negative weight edge, then we one can try for dextrous. So, if, if no negative, if no negative H negative weight H. So, this implies no negative cycle, this implies we can run dextrous. Okay. Now, if you are run dextrous for all pair shortest path, so dextrous will take how much time? The dextrous is also single source, single source shortest path, single source. So, now one run of dextrous will take order of it depends on which data structure we are using. So, if we use the Fibonacci Heath and the worst case amortized analysis we have seen it is order of v log n log v sorry. Now, this is basically this is basically order of uh, E is order of v. So, this is basically order of uh, anyway let it be. So, now if we run it for all pair shortest path then it will be for all pair it will be order of v into e plus v log v sorry v square log v. Now, this is same as this is as good as the void versal because this is at most order of n cube, but sometimes if e is not order of n cube then it is less. Okay. So, depending on E, it will be uh, either order of n cube or order of n square log n. So, this is good. So, the problem is here we have this assumption. So, there should be no negative weight edge. So, how we can do that? So, to ensure that we have to do something called graph relabeling, uh, re weighting. Graph re -weighting. So, this is just to ensure there will be no negative weight. So, we are going to label the vertices, we are going to this is a theorem, we are going to suppose there is a label given a label uh, H v. Okay for each vertex v such that we reweight the graph, reweight the reweight the h, reweight each h u v belongs to E by so w hat u v is equal to. So, it was having a original weight w u v then uh, then uh, plus h of v minus h of u okay. w u v then plus h of v minus h of u. Okay. So, basically what we are doing we have a two vertex this this is w i v 
Now, we are labeling the vertices by h, h is a function, h is a function, we have to uh, get this function, we will we'll come to know how we will get this function, h is a function such that. So, we are labeling this by h of u, we are labeling this by h of v. Now, this we are rewriting as w hat w hat i v is basically w the original weight, then plus the difference between their weight. So, this way we are re rewriting. So, if we rewrite this, uh, then okay. so, so, we rewrite all the vertices, all the uh, path all the edges like this. If we do that, then suppose we have a path p, p from v 1 to v k. Suppose we have a path, any path, any path, let us take a path p from this. Now, what is the weight of this path? Weight of this path is basically uh, w of summation of w of weight of this, weight of this like this. So, so w of v uh, v uh, v i 2 v i plus 1 or v i minus 1 to v i 2 v i plus 1 say i plus 1 and i starting from say uh, if it is say k plus 1, 1 to k say. Okay. So, if you do like this, then what is the, this is the original weight, original weight of the path. Now, what is the new weight of the path after the relabeling of the weight? So, this will be basically, so we relabel each of this. So, this is basically summation of, this is relabel as w of um, so, we relabel each of this. So, w of v i plus v of i plus 1 plus h of v of i plus 1 minus h of v i. So, if we i is from 1 to k. So, if we do this or if we put this k, then we have to take it as k minus 1. Anyway, this is just a notation. So, if we just take this, this will be basically w of p plus the h of, so this will give us a v k minus h of v 1, v k minus h of v 1. Now, we want weight of each path, there should not be any negative cycle. So, we want weight, weight of each path should be positive. So, that means, uh, we want to choose uh, we want to choose the labeling. So, this is the this is the new path. So, new path will depend on this. So, we want to choose the labeling in such a way that so we want to choose the labeling in such a way that for all the edges w v must be greater than 0 for all u v belongs to e. Okay. So, for that what we are doing? So, we are we are uh, so we want so this is nothing but what this is w of u v plus h of v minus h of u. So, this we want greater than 0. So, that means what? That means we want uh, w of we want basically so, this we take this side. So, w of u minus w of v is less than equal to w of u v. So, this we want for all the vertices. We want to have a h function. So, this h is basically how, how come we got this h? So, we can get this h from the, uh, this is the uh, solving the different constant. Okay. So, like we, we have seen x 1 minus x 2 is less than equal to w i i w i want to like this. So, solving that is, so again we can apply the Bellman Ford algorithm to solve this difference constant. Using the Bellman Ford algorithm, we can get this h using Bellman Ford. 
So, using Bell Manford algorithm, we can get this age. So, this will take Bell Manford will take order of n cube, say, okay, v comma e. And then once we relabel it, then we know that there will be no negative weight h in the graph, then we can run the dextras. So, after relabeling, once we got the solution of this, then we relabel the this edges, we got the h, then we relabel the edges, once we relabel the edges, then we apply this is the first step. So, once we relabel the edges, then the next step is we apply well, apply the dextras for all pairs shortest path because there is no negative cycle, and this will take time for all pair order of v into e plus v square log v. If we use the data structure Fibonacci heap, and that amortized analysis. Okay, so now. So, now we got a path, but this path is basically what is path is w p. Now, from w p we need to get back the uh, w I w hat p we need to get back the w p. So, that is that we have the formula w hat p is basically w p plus h of v k minus h of v 1 and this will take. So, we, we know this. So, basically w p is basically h w p hat minus h of v k plus h of v. So, we know this function h and we know this y step 2 then we get the this. So, the run time is basically this one. So, this is the way because we want to use the dextras algorithm because dextras algorithm is time complexity is good compared to all other algorithm like Bellman Ford. So, we want to use dextras, but for that we need to have this no negative weight h, for that we need to re weighting the graph. So, this algorithm, this idea is by Johnson's idea. Okay, thank you.